In this video we'll look at PAG 3 which is all about enthalpy determination and it covers one scale and that is the measurement of temperature. So the example that I'm going to use is an enthalpy change of neutralization. I could have gone for enthalpy change of combustion which would require a very very similar method but we'll go for this one. So here's the scenario. A student wanted to calculate a value for the enthalpy change of neutralization using the reaction between hydrochloric acid and sodium hydroxide and there's the equation for the reaction. So plan how the student could establish a value for the enthalpy change of neutralization and in your answer include details of the practical procedure that would need to be carried out, any measurements that would need to be taken and steps for the calculation. So if you want to have a go at that, pause the video and then play on and listen to how I would tackle it. So the first thing I've said, using a measuring cylinder, measure out 50 cm cubed of one mole per decimeter cubed hydrochloric acid. Now obviously you don't have to choose the exact volume and concentration that I've gone for, but the um, acid's going to end up in a polystyrene cup, so we don't want too much, and we want a decent temperature rise out of the reaction, and so I've gone for this one mole per decimeter cubed acid. If you went for a low concentration, you probably wouldn't get a big enough temperature rise. Into a separate measuring cylinder, measure out the same volume and concentration of sodium hydroxide solution. You'll see why that's important when we come to the calculation. And then allow the solutions to reach the same temperature by leaving it to stand for, and I've said five minutes, you could say several minutes, it's obviously not, not important exactly how many minutes you go for. And then measure the temperature of the solutions using a thermometer. So obviously there you're checking that they are at the same temperature. Place that 50 cm cubed of, I've gone for the acid, into the polystyrene cup. You could have gone for the alkali, that's not really important there. And then carefully add the other solution and record the maximum temperature reached. And so the calculation now. So the first thing you do is calculate the temperature rise for the reaction. Then you would calculate the energy in joules released by the reaction using the Q equals MC delta T expression. So in this case, M would be 100 because we've used 50 of each solution, 50 cm cubed of each solution, so that would give you 100 grams mass of solution. C is the specific heat capacity of the solution. We're assuming it's the same as water, and so 4.18. Delta T is the temperature rise. You then convert the joules into kilojoules by dividing by 1,000. You then calculate the moles of water produced by the reaction using N equals C times V. So if you remember, I chose the same volume and concentration of acid and alkali, and that's because they're reacting in a one-to-one -one ratio in this reaction. And the moles of water will also be the same, therefore, as the moles of acid and the moles of alkali. So in this case, we use one mole per decimeter cubed acid and alkali, 0.05 dm cubed acid and alkali. So the moles of water is going to be 0.05. So the enthalpy change, therefore, for the reaction, we take that Q value that we calculate here. We need to put a minus sign in front of it because this is exothermic. And we divide that by 0.05. And that's going to give us kilojoules per mole. So here's a worked example now with some values in. So let's suppose a student carried out this experiment 
Once the solutions were both a constant temperature of 22.5, she mixes them together. I've gone for the same quantities as in the um, plan. So she mixes them into a polystyrene cup and records at the end of the experiment a maximum temperature rise of 29 degrees C. Use the student's results to calculate a value for the enthalpy change of neutralisation. Give your answer to three significant figures. So if you want to have a go, pause the video and then play on for the answer. So the temperature rise came out at 6.5 degrees. Q was 100 times 4.18 times that temperature rise, which is that many joules. Remember, we've got to get it into kilojoules, so we'll divide by 1,000 gives us that. The moles of water produced will be the same as the moles of acid or the moles of alkali used. So we get 0 0.05. So delta H comes out at minus, don't forget that minus sign, 54.3 kilojoules per mole. Now there are some other scenarios I could have chosen, but I didn't want to include them in the video, otherwise you would have had three almost identical questions. We'll just quickly run through them now. Could have gone for an enthalpy change of combustion. So if that had been the case, you'd need to know the mass of water being heated by the fuel, the temperature rise, and the moles of fuel burned. And the other one could have been an enthalpy change of reaction. So the classic example is the displacement reaction between copper sulfate solution and an excess of zinc. If that had been the case, you'd need to know the volume, and in other words, the mass of the solution, the temperature rise and the moles of limiting reagent. 